Realization is very valuable. So if I have complete faith in Krishna as God and my spiritual master, representative of God, then the import, the real meaning of these Vedic scriptures will reveal to me in my heart. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Savasya cha ham rinisani vishta matak smriti dhyanam apohanam cha. Krishna clearly says, your knowledge, your remembrance, your forgetfulness, that's not you. You didn't build that. That comes from me. I'm the one that gives you knowledge. I'm the one that helps you to remember. And I'm the one that causes you to forget. Why? Because I'm in your heart. And I am the supreme controller. So, anything needs the sanction of Krishna. In the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, there are the five causes or the five factors that determine the success of any activity. What was the fifth factor? Super soul, Krishna. As Krishna says in chapter 13 of Bhagavad Gita, Anumantahi Upadrasta. I am the one who oversees. I'm watching everything. I see everything. And I'm the one who gives thumbs up or thumbs down. I'm the one who says yes or no. So Krishna is the final factor, Daiva, Super Soul. So that's just to clear the air. So now please repeat after me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. One more thing before I start. Another line that I've been meditating on for the past two months is that line in the Tulsi Kirtan song. Please give me the privilege of devotional service. We should never take whatever service we have, whatever, whatever if it's little, we have a lot of service. The, my, my mentality should be, this is a privilege. If I have that mentality, then I will be able to execute my spiritual life nicely. It's a privilege. So it's a privilege to sit on this Vyasasana. It's a privilege to be here for the first time in my life in Australia, in Sydney. And how do I appreciate this word privilege? Third Shikshastakam verse. For me, that is so important. Everything centers, that's why I chanted that. I always begin my lectures with that third Shikshastakam. Trinanda Pisuni Chenanta Rodiva Sahishnuna. I put a straw in my mouth. I flatter you a million times. Please learn third Shikshastakam verse. It is, in my opinion, the secret of success. Materially, what to speak of spiritually. In case you may not know what is the third Shikshastakam verse, Four things, Lord Chaitanya says, that we should constantly have around our neck for constant remembrance. Number one, humility. How much humility? Don't worry. You're, you're not going to be too humble. Trust me. You may think, I may think, oh, bro, I'm too humble. Then there's always room for more. <laughs> so, meek and humble. Number two, tolerance. Now, tonight's subject is how to maintain spiritual life in the Grihastha Ashram. So, here's the first point. Grihastha life means take a big 
big slice of humble pie, <laughs> take a big, big slice of tolerance, because that's what's coming to a theater near you. <laughs> that's what the Grihasta Ashram, I know from personal experience. All right? So I became, a, I was a brahmachari for seven years. Sankirtan, fired up brahmachari, leading really raucous kirtans. Right? Then in 1980, Krishna said, you know what? You're puffed up. You need to get married. So by 1980, so many of my god brothers now, gurus and sannyasis and so I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to now get married and I will say to my wife, make me samosa. <laughs> that was what I was thinking was household life. But after two weeks, I realized I'm not the boss, I'm the DOS. <laughs> so Grihasta Ashram means now what you didn't learn before, now you're going to learn. <laughs> For instance, another thing I remember when I first started, when you live in an Iskand temple, I don't know if that's still true, but as we say, back in the day, right? You had a temple commander, and the temple commander was always right there. Prabhu, we need you to do this. And then about one hour later, Prabhu, we need you to do Prabhu, Prabhu, the whole day is Prabhu, Prabhu, Prabhu. We don't get any rest. It's go here, do this, now do this, do this, do this. When I was a kid, we played a, a game called Simon Says. Simon Says, do this, Simon. That's what it was like with the temple commander. He was always there, and there was no free time. It was like, oh, there he is, oh, the temple commander. But I'm trying to read, Prabhu, we need you to cut vegetables. <laughs> Prabhu, we need you to clean this bathroom. So, when, so you're thinking, boy, when I become a grahasta, then I won't have this temple commander on my case. <laughs> but sure enough, I changed one temple commander for another. What's that temple commander? The wife. And to this very day, Prabhu, Instead of Prabhu, it's Prabhu. <laughs> so it's a little sweeter. <laughs> it's not that harsh, Prabhu. It's more loving, Prabhu <laughs> I need you to do. <laughs> so anyone who's going into the Grahasta Ashram thinking now I will be the enjoyer, <laughs> that doesn't work that way. Because Krishna Consciousness is teaching us how we are, what is our actual position. The material consciousness, or the consciousness of the Grihamedhi, there are two nomenclatures, Grihamedhi and Grihasta. So the Grihamedhi has a wife, has a children, has money, has some independence. But the mentality is, I want to enjoy. I want to control. I want to be the center of attention and everything is about me, me, because I'm so wonderful. I'm all attractive, can't you see? That's the Griha Maiden. And who's the founder Acharya of Griha Maiden? Hiranya Kashipu. <laughs> he is the founder Acharya of the. Even his own son said Griha Vrtha. When there was the exchange between Prahlad and his father, Prahlad said, Oh, you have taken a vow to remain in household life. And Prahlad told him, You should leave and go to the forest, you should go to Vrindavan. And that's when the whole antagonism started because the young five-year-old boy Prahlad was preaching to his Grihamedi father who only had sense gratification as the goal of life. That is 
modern civilization. Just like where I come from. I'm sure Australia is different. I'm sure. <laughs> but where I come from, I have a joke. United States of Sense Gratification. <laughs> and they have, a, just like we have Mayapur, Vrindavan as our dams, our holy place. So the holy place for the United States of Sense Gratification, Las Vegas. <laughs> where there is unrestricted sense gratification, and just like we sometimes do 24-hour kirtan, <laughs> in Las Vegas, 24-hour Kali. <laughs> Non-stop, you can gamble till you drop. Illicit sex, intoxication, meat eating, 24 hours, but you got to pay if you want to play. <laughs> and it's all designed to take your money Bye-bye. Come back again. You've taken all your money. Goodbye. And the foolish Griha maybe then saves up his money and goes back again for another Tirtha of culture <laughs> in Las Vegas. So the Griha maybe his or her focus, uh, intent, is how to enjoy the senses. And that's why the conditioned soul has come to this material world. Prabhupada teaches throughout his books, not just in one place, repeatedly, over and over again, originally we were with Krishna. So why have we come here? We have come here because we want to imitate Krishna as the enjoyer. We want to imitate Krishna as the proprietor. We want to imitate Krishna. Everybody should love me. I am the center of attention. So we're, we've come to this material world to lord it over, to enjoy, dominate. That's Grihamedi consciousness. So what's, what is a Grihasta? A Grihasta also has wife, children, home, and some little independence, little, okay, that's, that's there in the Grihastha Ashram. You have a little independence. But the focus is completely different. The focus is not, and it can't be, not that it's not, it can't be that I am the enjoyer, that I simply want to enjoy my senses unrestrictedly. That can't be, because that's the Grihamedi. Spiritual life means Vairagya Vidya. That's the essence of spiritual life. Vairagya, and I didn't say Viagra. No. Vairagya. Okay? Vairagya means detachment. And Vidya Transcendental knowledge. Two sides of the same coin. You cannot actually have transcendental knowledge, real transcendental knowledge, unless you're detached from sense gratification. If I'm still attached to sense gratification, it's impossible to acquire transcendental knowledge. It doesn't work that way. Two sides of the same coin. There has to be detachment. And detachment is itself a two-sided coin. Because there is personal detachment and impersonal detachment. For instance, in the Bhagavad Gita, I think you've heard of that book, Bhagavad Gita? Perhaps you've read a few pages of it? Yeah, it's the Hare Krishna movement. Uh, our movement is based on it. How many people have read the entire Bhagavad Gita? Ah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> you have not read the entire Bhagavad Gita? I read it every year, cover to cover. Shame, shame, shame. Gots to read Bhagavad Gita, Prabhu. <laughs> so, Bhairagya, so detachment is also a two-sided coin. So, in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 12, Arjuna opens the chapter by asking Krishna, should I worship you personally or impersonally? 
which is a very important question that's been being asked for 10,000 million years, is still being asked and will be continued to ask in the future. Should I worship God the impersonal way or the personal way? And Krishna right off the bat says, in my opinion, and after all, who is Krishna? Is he God? Yes. yes. Is he the topmost authority? Yes. yes. So I think his opinion counts? Yes. You are very intelligent. Give them yes. a big hand there. So Krishna says, in my opinion, you should worship my personal form. And then, as Krishna always does, he gives you the complete answer. And he says, and if you want to worship me impersonally, klesha. Klesha means trouble. How many people want more trouble? Not good, because some people, oh, I'm like Kunti, please give me more calamities. <laughs> and you're not on Kunti's platform. I love when I meet people like that, you know, like, Prabhuji, I want more to, like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you're more advanced than me. <laughs> so Krishna says it is simply troublesome to uh, realize the absolute truth in the impersonal way. So in this detachment, there's the impersonal detachment, which is practiced by the Mayavadis and the impersonalists, where they completely negate and abstain from any kind of materialistic activity. And it's virtually impossible to do, but they try to reduce it down as little as little as possible. For instance, a real Mayavadi follower of Shankaracharya, he's supposed to not do anything except meditation and study the Vedanta Sutra. And as far as eating, this much. Right? No Sunday feast if you're Mayavadi. <laughs> you have to eat this much. That's why I can never be a Mayavadi. I love my prasada. <laughs> So you can check, I made my plate before I ate the time. I know why I joined this movement. <laughs> so that's the impersonal estate. They want to become detached from this material world, but is it a negative process? No, 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 no. It's like when I was growing up as a child, I had parents, and whatever it is I want, no. I want to do this, no. I want this, no. So I was trained right away. I didn't know it at the time, but when I read Prabhupada's books, then, oh, now I understand. I had impersonalist parents. Because <laughs> everything was no, 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 no. Ah, maybe, maybe, ah. Maybe Prabhupada. <laughs> but then there's the personalist path of detachment. So the personalist path of detachment is two-sided. Yes, we want to tone down the fever of material life, but you need something to balance. You need something to replace. The impersonalists, all they have is no, 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 no. They don't have anything better or superior to make up for the no. Whereas in the personalist, in the bhakti path, you do have the other side of the coin, which is attachment to Krishna. So yes, on one hand, we want to reduce the material fever. Materialistic life of sense gratification is like a fever. When you have a fever, it gets 100, 100, 100, 200, 300, and it's like, 107, that's it, you're out. <laughs> so you gotta watch when the fever is spiking high, you gotta watch out. Because you wanna get it down to 9900 like that. Then what we'd say, you're cool, man. <laughs> you're cool. So materialistic sense gratification is like a fever. Alright? So in Krishna consciousness, we want to keep that fever of material life cool, bring it down. 
A sannyasi wants to get ice cold. He wants no, but we hastas, we like to have a little bit of salt with our food. Because salt is what gives you the taste. So as a grihasta, you're allowed some sense gratification. But it does not go out of control. Keep it at 99, 100 degrees. But you want to also become more and more attached to Krishna. That's the secret of success in the household, the ashram. Make sure that whatever decisions you make, whatever plans you make, what is your vision, what is your... You want to make decisions and plans that with this next thing that we're going to do is going to increase our attachment for Krishna. Then you know you are having a good Krishna conscious household of life. So, Krishna consciousness is dependent on two main activities. You're doing one right now. What are you doing right now? Hearing. Yes, you are hearing. Right. Very good. So, your hearing of the philosophy of the holy name, kirtans, that you want to maximize every day. You cannot do too much hearing. Okay? So you can't be too humble and you can't do too much hearing about who? Krishna. Ah, very good. You have to hear about Krishna. As the Prabhu was nicely saying earlier tonight when he was giving his talk, that we have to be careful not to get involved in Prajalpa or Gramya Kata, politics, village talk, and in household life, that's there. So keep it at a minimum. You want to have maximum amount of time every day for hearing about Krishna. And once you are sufficiently addicted, ah, yes, you want to get addicted to hearing about Krishna. That is good addiction. Because it doesn't cost anything. <laughs> and it's not illegal. Nobody is going to put you in jail. Officer, this man, he's hearing too much about Krishna. <laughs> I used to make a joke. Back when we were, America was trying to hunt Osama bin Laden, remember? It was everybody, where's Osama bin Laden? Where's Waldo? And so, I always used to make a joke. Give me Osama bin Laden. We'll put him in a jail, and all for the rest of his life, we'll play the Prabhupada Japa tape. <laughs> Don't kill him, but, and we'll blast it. Even while he's sleeping, I am just not in. Sit properly. <laughs> and then we'll feed him, and we'll feed him this delicious prasadam that you serve here. So I think I would have made the jail here. <laughs> okay? So all day long, for the rest of us, they shouldn't have killed him. They should, Obama should have listened to me. <laughs> Put him in my jail, the Hare Krishna jail, all day long. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. That would have been great. So, maximize and become addicted to hearing about Krishna. Because once you're addicted to hearing about Krishna, then that's what's going to come out of your mouth. You can always discern who you're speaking to, what kind of person you're dealing with, as soon as you let them talk. The trick I use when I'm preaching to somebody, I let them talk. Because first I want to figure out, who am I talking to? Is it a two-legged animal? Is it a Maya body? Is it a... And the only way you're going to know that, and Prabhupada even says in the Bhagavad Gita, speech is the most important quality of a man. So generally, I let the other person talk. Go ahead, go ahead. Take some prasad, talk. 
so that I know who I'm talking to. Then once I understand who I'm talking to, now I know what I should deliver to him, where I should interject. But first you've got to find out who you're talking to. So you can always tell something of who the person is by what kind of language comes out of their mouth. So you can tell who's an advanced devotee because whenever you're with them, what comes out? Krishna. Because why? Because that's what they've been hearing for such a long time. If you listen to um, modern pop music, then that's going to come out. If you listen to that political uh, radio or TV, you'll see that's what the person will bring into the conversation. Or if they're into cricket. Ah, <laughs> yeah. oh, you revealed yourself. <laughs> ah, he said, my uh. Yeah. No. No? Oh, you come up here. You're more advanced. <laughs> or are you I telling the truth? No. I Okay. But he's, he, he watches. Oh. Oh, no. 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 Uh, he you're in front of Krishna. No. Alright, it's okay. That's alright. <laughs> he's okay. Alright. So, the more you hear about Krishna, the more that's going to come out. As Grihastas, I love this. Grihastas, say hello to my little friend. <laughs> so this, Grihastas, this is your lifeline. Without this, your Grihamenis. This has to become number one priority in the Grihastha Ashram. This has to be done every day without fail. Let's all do it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Now Prabhupada writes in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Grihastas, and he says even he uses the words well-to-do grihastas. So everybody thinks, I'm not well-to-do enough. I could be more well-to-do. <laughs> You're pretty much well-to-do. Okay? Well-to-do grihastas would probably not be able to get up early in the morning and knock off 16 rounds before going to work. If you can, then you're the topmost. But generally, Grihastas and Prabhupada recommends you should do some in the morning, some in the middle of the day, and some at night. But ideally, ideally, you want to get this done before you have to face that mean, cruel, nasty, material world. <laughs> because Grihastas means you have to get a job, go to work, and deal with this crazy material world. So this chanting of Japa, that is your immune system from Maya. Anyone who knows anything, you get sick because your immune system is weak, and then you're susceptible to all kinds of viruses and germs. But if you're healthy, and you maintain good hygiene, then you're able to ward off. So in the same way, your consciousness needs to be uh, strengthened. You have to have a good immune system from Maya. And it all comes from here. And of course, there is two kinds of japa. <laughs> <laughs> That's not Japa. That's Bapa. Real Japa is how many how many different names in the Maha Mantra? Three. Three. Different names? Three. 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 How many names altogether? 
16. How many syllables in each name? So how many syllables altogether? 32. 32. 2 times 16 is, I think they, they haven't changed it, have they? <laughs> That's now new math, right? 5 plus 5 is 1, huh? <laughs> Is that what they're teaching you here? There are some schools in America like that. It's called new math. So, make sure that you taste each syllable. Ha, re, krishna, ha, re, rama. Make sure that you're pronouncing each syllable. And so many times after I've been preaching now over 40 years. You always get that question. Prabhu, how should I chant? What's the best way to chant? Do you have some technique, Prabhu? Yes, it's called listen to what's coming out. Pay attention to the vibration you're making. Japa is simply a question of listening to what you're pronouncing. Therefore, as Prabhupada writes, you have to use your tongue and lips like this and your teeth and actually pronounce the syllables and not make us. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, at the time of death, it's going to come. <laughs> right? Is that, that old joke we used to give in, in the 70s? There was this joke. At the time of death, these two Yamadudas came. Hey, wait a second, I chained the job. No, no, you can't. You chained the schnick and nom, and that's who we are. You can't get you. We had crazy jokes back then. Yes. So make sure that you pronounce the syllables, and the idea is you pay attention, you concentrate. Anybody here a disciple of Lokanath Swami? Do we have any disciples of Lokanath Swami? Many, many years ago, Lokanath Swami was in Los Angeles, and I happened to come in and see him, and he was taking prasadam, and we talked a little bit, and I think I asked him, Maharaj, uh, what would you say is the most important thing to think about japa? He said, the ten offense, the tenth. Inattentive chanting, he said, and he's actually quoting Bhaktivinoda Thakur in the Harinam Chintamani. I found out later that's what he was referring to. That the mother of all offenses is inattentive chanting. That when you commit that offense of inattentiveness, that gives birth to all the other ten offenses. So every day make it your priority. Okay, this is my japa time. Oh. Grihastas, very big point. Make sure, as husband and wife, you spend quality time with each other. And when you have children, spend quality time with them. Because life is going to go real fast, and nowadays, the world is very, very crazy and hectic, and things can go out of control, so make sure you spend quality time. And make sure you spend quality time with your little friend. <laughs> Every day. This japa that you do, this is the most important thing that you're going to do every day. From here will come all your success. From this chanting of japa will come your spiritual success, and what does Prabhupada write in the first canto? Material well-being automatically follows spiritual well-being. So if you can accept that, this becomes the most important thing you do every day. Because from this, everything else is going to proceed. And I have personal experience that if I start to slack on this, and if I start to neglect my quality time with Krishna, what happens is you may go for some time, but you're going to start going down, down. And before you know it, you'll be between that place called a rock and a hard place. And you'll be screaming for help, and then it'll dawn on you, oh, 
I need to spend quality time with Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, hear about Krishna, chant, that is your foundation. Now, in terms of husband and wife, how to relate to each other. The key to a successful marriage is that the wife, her concern should be how to serve my husband. But it cannot be one-sided. Yes, serve me, slave. <laughs> no. The husband also has to have as his priority, how may I serve my wife? But service in terms of Krishna consciousness, not just sense gratification. It has to be how can I serve my wife so that her Krishna consciousness flourishes? And the wife also is thinking, how can I serve my husband so that his Krishna consciousness will flourish? If you both have that mentality, you'll be on your honeymoon forever. <laughs> but when does the honeymoon end? What have you done for me lately? What about me, my needs, me, I want. That's when you're going to have trouble. But if the mentality is, how can I help and assist? Because it's a team. Marriage is a team. Whether it be uh, soccer. Do you play soccer here? Then? Yeah. Okay, so you play soccer. <laughs> so soccer is a team sport. It's not just beside stupid golf. <laughs> just you and some little ball. <laughs> and you take a nice long walk. And <laughs> they call it a sport. I don't know. Now that somebody's thinking, what do you mean? You're disrespecting golf? I'm going to report you to the GBC man. <laughs> It's golf for crying out loud. <laughs> so, household of life is a team. And the team has to have cooperation. And now, with the team, husband and wife, the leadership will sometimes change. Sometimes the husband will have to be the leader. Other times, the wife will have to be the leader. And the key again is, I have your interest at heart. Sometimes in a marriage, words will have to be spoken to correct the other, right? Now there's two ways of getting your objective. Hey, stupid, that's not gonna get you a good result. But if the wife says, Prabhuji, <laughs> my dear wonderful husband, I hate to point it out, but I think you're doing something wrong. If the wife approaches the husband nicely, gently, if he's a good husband, he should be able to accept it. And the same way the husband cannot say to the wife, hey, woman. No. So if the husband has to say something to the wife, Devi, my dear goddess, you're so beautiful, but you burnt the chapati. And this subject is inevitable. Could you try to do better next time? So, my point is, how you say it can change everything. How you say it. Now, it's hard because life is going on and we're, you know, we just come back from the office and, you know, it's been a nerve wracking day. So, when you enter the threshold of the house, 
you have to sort of like dust yourself off and regroup, change the channel, click, 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 and re, you know, reset. You know, sometimes on the computer you have to restart because it's, you know, it's like all oh, things are just so the best thing to just restart it. So when you come back after the day, before you enter the house, restart your consciousness and come in gently, sweetly, and you'll have a very nice Krishna conscious life. Final thing, because I don't like to go too long and it's been long enough. Try to be each other's best friend. If you are each other's best friend, then you'll have the best marriage that you can have. Confide with each other, share with each other, don't hold secrets, be straight, honest with each other, don't play games, be honest, and be each other's best friend. That's my two cents. Thank you very much. May Krishna bless you, protect you, maintain you. I am coming back, but I don't think I'm coming here. But I'm going to be uh, in January. I'm going to be here for almost a month. But I don't think anything's arranged for here. But I'm going to be going to that, what is that, new? No Bukula Farm, so I might see you again. If I don't, thank you very much. Please forgive my offenses. And I hope that your japa is successful. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So how did I do? Thank you, I like you too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's great, Nirata Prabhu.